If you said to me right now, because this came up at lunch just now, somebody goes, what do you want? I go, and literally I didn't have to think. It just fell out and I was shocked. I just go, peace. And I'm like, holy shit. So if I look at everything in my book, which by the way, I love the fact that it's almost empty. Mm. I'm so the opposite of Joan Rivers. I worked my way out of that. Mm where I look at it and I go, oh my God, does this bring me peace? And yeah, it's like more, you're Mori Kondo or however you say it, your life. Like, yeah. did you do her? Like, no, do I don't you know believe in about? her because I don't think you should get rid of everything. Mm. I follow the minimalist rule, which right. I just did their podcast yesterday. It's spectacular. And it's this thing about if you want your life to be better, you don't add to it. You subtract from it. Right. So basically huh. subtracting the wrong husband, the wrong career comedy for me at that time. You know, <laughs> subtracting the wrong friends. That's yeah. why the pandemic was a little bit good for me in the way of that. Oh, didn't it you help know, that? It decluttered friendships. Yes. So I go, wow, every time I've tried to add more, it doesn't work. But subtracting works. And then the right wow. stuff appears. Well, because then also you just have the things that you love around you, you know, so yeah. it's like you're just only seeing things that motivate you and make you feel good. Yeah. And have the people around that. I notice now in my life, nobody needs me more than I need them because I was always the one who helped and fixed and paid for everything and was like, well, I make the most in the room, so I have to pay for the yeah. dinner. That's like not making them feel any better, not, by and the It's way. enabling them to not make money and to yeah, not do their It's own not yet. good. So I was trying to he help them. But really what they needed to do was heal themselves. Yeah. So helping and healing is two different things. That's their job. But even now I'm like, wow, this is really good to, but it keeps me in check now. I'll let it go. I'll, I'll make mistakes and then I'll go pull it back, pull it back, ask what you need for right. help. Don't help too much because that's their journey. Right. So it's all in it. I, I love where I'm at now, but it has to get better. Like it just has to keep getting better. Yeah. I can't let myself slide. And it's work. It sounds like, the, the, okay, oh, I, yes. that's what I, I always thought like race to be finished with something and then you'll have peace. Like oh, I yes. never, I thought like do this, do this, do this. And then, and then everything will be good. But it's actually like the journey, the work, like there is no like finish line where you rest. Everything in your life takes work and it, that's like a part of the good life or whatever. Right. Like that realization is was is been very hard and then, for me. But sure. if you only do the things that you like, right? If you only like choose things that are like aligned with what you really, really like, then it's like not it doesn't it's not work. Have to be work. I have a friend who my friend Hannah Fidel wrote all these movies. She's got like a deal with FX. She her she had a show called A Teacher on FX. Mm. She's like so she's always writing something. And I asked her once, I was like, how do you write? Like, how do you sit down and write? She's like, I love it. I was like, oh, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> well, dude, that resonates big time because I'll tell you something. In the past few years, people had, on the podcast or TV or whatever would go to me, um, what do you miss about comedy? And I literally can't think of anything except I remember when I started, I started in Connecticut. I said, I'm not going to be seen in a city until I'm good. Then that's probably why it took off because I was never looked at as an open mic or in New York or LA. So I remember being in Connecticut and we would all go to the diner after the open mic and like trade jokes and have fun with it. And I'm like, oh my God, when I look at my life now, I'm like, oh my God, I just recreated the one part of comedy that I loved, which was mm. sitting around writing jokes, having fun with these guys. And that's what you do on your podcast. That Well, well no, we actually go really deep. Yeah. What we do is I help them with their comedy. But what we do on the podcast is I noticed these two guys, It's these it, the podcast called Losers with a Dream. And what happened was I noticed they're straight guys who are millennial age, but they're not bro -y. They like literally are masculine, but talk about such deep shit that I was like, this is a podcast, guys. And of course, I shoehorn my way on. Ah. So I'm like, oh, my God, this is the thing. You have to put vulnerability with humor into straight guy spaces. So they start doing it. And I'm telling you, I'm not even kidding. Like, I have to smile right now. Every time we do a podcast, I'm so happy. It's That's so great. much fun. I make them go deep. The issues are really hard to talk about. It's like acceptance, vulnerability, fear of success, um, alcoholism, like dying. Oh we did gosh. a fucking dying podcast because one of their moms died when he was six. And the other ones had many friends die through alcoholism and things. And I'm like, why Sound am like I comics? No, right, right, exactly. And, and then I go on and of course I make fun of them a little bit because yeah. I have to, that's my brand and I enjoy doing that and they love me. And then I like kind of coach them. And I'm like, dude, how am I going home smiling at 60 years old having millennial guys in my life who are actually vulnerable? It's are they just hot? a miracle. 
They're cute. Yeah, okay, definitely. Maybe that's part of it. <laughs> How did you? <laughs> no, 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 not for me. Not for me. <laughs> right now, it just feels so weird that every time I drive home. Now, honestly, this is what intentional living, as you mm -hmm. know, you're saying. You look in your book every time you drive home. You go, "Oh my God, why am I smiling?" With comedy, I, I God bless it. I love the stage, not much anymore. But boy, going to the hotel, going to the fucking airport, I would notice every Thursday, I would start to get really bummed because I'd have to pack, mm. and I'd be like, "Oh my God!" So you just start noticing this life is not for me anymore. But it, it worked out how it should. Yeah, and how how did you find these two guys? That you oh my God, this was random as F, which shows why I sometimes have to say yes to things because I'm a big, you know how they say improvers are great because they're yes ands? Mm -hmm. I've been a no but since the day I was yeah, born. Yeah. I, I, if you ask me today, let's go mountain climb, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, I don't even have a mild reaction yeah. where I go, oh no, thank you. I go, you're a fucking asshole because yeah. I hate everything. I just say yes and then get mad at them for asking. <laughs> I'm like, why the fuck did you put me in this position that seems appropriate yeah so well what happened was my niece emily my sister's daughter she said to me she works at indeed and she said to me one day she goes you know i have a friend at indeed and he's trying to try comedy he's doing a show can you come and give him notes and of course i'm loaded for bear because i'm like i know this guy's gonna suck like yeah I mean, so i do anything my nieces and nephews ask i'm a big pussy i like to caretake so we go to dinner and i say to him at dinner i said bo listen man Guaranteed you're going to suck. Guaranteed I won't have anything nice to say, but I'm just telling you in advance, I tell it like it is. He said, no problem. I see him do the comedy. This is like two years ago. I'm like, oh, he doesn't suck. He's a beginner, but I always, an ex-boyfriend of mine once said, every open micer has one joke worth stealing. And this guy <laughs> had a few. So then I say, oh, let's have a writing meeting. You're actually pretty good. Then he introduces me to this guy, Nick, Nick Scopoletti. And that's when I noticed they're both funny and vulnerable, which to me, I don't know if you guys date and stuff, but like fucking guys in their 30s when I was growing up, mm. they didn't talk deep shit. That's why you yeah. got to date guys in their 20s. Yeah, I think what? so. I've, I'm going back to the teens. I really, they are better. I'm not to the teens, but I mean, they're like, yeah, no. they were raised better for some reason. They yeah. had some feelings. And I've noticed this in my nephews too, which I love that they literally, we, my mom passed away a, couple, a few months ago. Mm. I'm and sorry. Yeah, thank you. And I noticed they actually teared up and cried and talked about their feelings and mm. wanted to plant trees for grandma mm. and stuff. And I'm like, holy shit, they've, this generation, I call myself the world's oldest millennial because I do not relate to 60 year old bitches. Yeah. Everyone in my age group is worried about their taxes. Fuck you. Yeah. How about Black Lives Matter? How about putting people to work? douchebag who worries about your house. But how about putting yeah. the tax guys to work? I agree. They're helping them. They're, I agree. They are helping some people. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, but isn't it interesting to not identify with your age group? And, yeah. I, and I don't try to make myself look younger. I don't have facial surgery. Yeah. I don't like it for me. No, you're killing it. You look amazing. It it's am. better you're, to not. You are so like, I I do feel like you're a peer of mine. Like, I just feel like we, yeah. we could sit and talk forever. Like, I feel like we have so much in common. And She said she mastered comedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's true, I actually. Either. I shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> no, you're ready. You're ready. But so the podcast is called struggles. Losers with, with a, a Dream. dream. And I that, love that name. I'll tell you what that's from. What was really, as you know, I did all the roasts and things on Comedy uh -huh. Central. So what happened was I remember when I we were sitting around trying to figure out, because as you know, a title for a podcast book oh, special so is the hardest oh, thing. Oh, we have our own drama. <laughs> oh, I'm we have, sure. We have episodes dedicated. <laughs> yes. So you understand. It's hard. Yes. So we're sitting around and I'm like, well, what's this about? Like, you guys suck at almost everything. I'm <laughs> terrific. Right. I said, so what is this? And then I remembered at the roast, I don't know if you ever noticed, but I would hit the whole day as first. I'd mm -hmm. make fun of everybody yep. on there. And then I'd go, but enough about these losers with a dream. Let's talk about Pam Anderson. So yeah. I'd like wrap it up or enough about these wastes of skin. Let's talk about. It. So I said, you can have this. It's a line from mine, but it really does describe. And I have to admit, even me too, because we're all kind of losers because we're trying to make it work. Yeah. We're trying to figure out life. And I'm in despair just as much as they are at my age. And I'm like, but we do have this dream. And theirs is to become famous, to get married, to have children, which I love that men talk about that. But mine is definitely that I'm trying to have a peaceful life. Yeah. And it's fucking hard. Like when you remove so much shit, you got to sit with the empty. And that's the hard part. Wow. That is so cool. I love that name so much. I like, I, like who doesn't relate to that? It's so. Right? Um, 